casting into the wind and waves with a half ounce spoon and a single barbless hook attached to it, hoping to find that one in a thousand strike of a keeper Chinook. Surrounded by wildlife, some of which may try and steal any fish that you do hook, whether that be seals and sea lions chasing your fish in the ocean, or other smaller critters taking advantage of an unattended fish on land, and small windows of the best fishing lasting only a few hours during the lowest of low tides, which only cycle low enough to fish the best spot a few times per year. Whether those tides line up at 5am or 9pm, that's your best chance. On top of all that, if you land one of these beasts from shore, the largest species of salmon reaching sizes of 20 pounds or bigger, you can keep it. So when I catch one, <laughs> I say that like it's a guaranteed thing, which is funny because last year I managed to lose every single one of the three Chinook I hooked from the beach that year. This truly is the peak of low percentage fishing to me. All that being said, welcome to the video. This is the real fish of a thousand casts. For the first three days, I rode my bike, strapping my net and rod to the rack, and stuffing my waders in my backpack. I fell asleep last night thinking about the scale of the universe, and I woke up this morning thinking about beach Chinook. Two very interconnected things if you think about it. Forget the scale of the universe, think about the scale of the Pacific Ocean or all the oceans. And I'm trying to get lucky here with one Chinook covering about 50 feet of that ocean with my spoon at a time. And then even if I do get lucky enough to put that spoon in front of a salmon's face, I'm trying to navigate the chances of that thing either deciding to bite it or deciding to turn and leave it alone. These are the kind of thoughts I'm having here on day one. From here on out, for the last two days, my dad joined me, and we drove down because he had time off work. My dad actually landed a jack chinook today, and I hooked a couple of fish that I think were coho. This morning and those fish were also included in this video, but this day was also part of my journey to catch a keeper chinook, so I'm including it here too. Oh, shh. 
shit. What do you want? <laughs> All right, let's back up into a little bit shallower water. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. He's coming towards me. This is my spot. Get out of here. That's not even a big one either. <sighs> he does not seem to want to leave me alone though, so I'm gonna back up into the shallowest water I can here. What do you want? This camera has a super view wide angle lens, so probably looks a lot farther away than it is, but that was very, very, very close. And he's probably still around here. I wonder why he's so interested in me. Dad's got a fish on. Ling cod. <laughs> it's kind of weird, you know, we're casting spoons, retrieving them fairly quick, but um, from the beach we catch occasionally like one to four pound ling cod. This is it. I've got a keeper size Chinook on. This could be it. For sure a keeper size fish. This is it. This is my chance. As long as he doesn't get taken by a seal or a sea lion, which is good because he's going into shallow water. This is it. Am I recording? I am, okay. This is it, the fish of a thousand casts right here. I'm not even sure if it's a Chinook yet, so. Could just be a big coho, but it's almost definitely a Chinook. Yeah, it's a Chinook. Oh, come on, get in there. Yes. Oh my god. That right there is a Chinook, and that is <laughs> the real fish of a thousand casts right there. Dad! It took me 28 and a half hours, over five days, no exaggeration, to land this one fish. Over that time, I missed a handful of big strikes and or Chinook following my spoon and turning, creating huge boil ups of water as close as a few feet away from my rod tip. This is the culmination of it all.
Now some people might think five days to catch one fish, you're just a crappy fisherman. You should be fishing the popular beaches that have loads more fish and shoulder to shoulder guys wading up to their necks. We're well, not wrong about the first part, but I wanted to film this video at my local river estuary which even though it has a Chinook hatchery, still has a relatively small run, and show other young anglers out there that you don't need loads of money to accomplish something as cool as catching a Chinook from shore. You just need a bit of dedication. By the way, even though this fish is a little darker, the meat is still high quality and you don't have to have a cromer to have a good eater. Thank you to Dustin Hopkin as this month's tier 3, and thanks to all the patrons for making a video like this one possible. If you want to become a patron, I post a podcast on there where I talk about recent videos in depth and name the spots I fished in them. Give this video a like, it will drastically help it get picked up by the YouTube algorithm more. Subscribe if you are new, and leave a comment letting me know what you thought about this style of video.